towards the end of The Last of Us after Joel finally reaches the Fireflies, for which he crossed hundreds of miles across almost the entire expanse of the continental United States. An incredible journey. When he meets Marlene, the leader of the Fireflies, she asks him, how did you do it? Like, how are you even here right now? Why are you still alive? Joel answers, it was her. She fought like hell to get here. He means Ellie, and he's right. He would not have reached their goal without her. When he was wounded at the University of Colorado, she was the one who dragged him to safety, who braved a harsh, deadly environment, hordes of infected, and hostile scavengers to find him medicine and food to nurse him back to health. When Ellie was kidnapped by cannibals, it was she who escaped on her own and killed their leader. But even if we ignore the things she did on her own, when she had Joel's help, it's still amazing how hard she fought. She journeyed from Boston all the way to Salt Lake City. That's over 2,000 miles, and they traveled a lot of that on foot. This is a Homeric Odyssey scale journey, and Ellie had to fight for every single step of it. Every step of those 2,000 miles were opposed by the elements, by the infected, by people trying to murder her. And that's just the physical journey. You also have to take into account the emotional toll of this journey, the immense loss and tragedy she experienced. From Riley, to Marlene, to Tess, to Henry and Sam. She even almost loses Joel at one point and she still keeps going. All of this and she never gives up. It begs the question, why? What is driving her? Why is she fighting so hard? What is she fighting for? What does Ellie want at the end of all this? I think Joel's motivations are fairly transparent throughout the story. First, he wants to deliver Ellie to his brother so he can dump her and go back to being by himself again. Then he wants to keep her safe and do right by her as his adopted daughter. He basically outright tells us all of this. Ellie, on the other hand, is a much more opaque character. Her motivations are harder to pin down. She doesn't really ever outright say what she wants. So let's just start from the start, trace her journey from its beginning to its end, to see if we can understand this character a bit better. Note this analysis is focused on the first game in the series. Obviously her motivations in part two are very different, and that deserves its own essay. So at the end of the first game, when talking about all the people she has lost, Ellie states that her partner Riley was the first to die. But that's not actually true. Before Riley, Ellie lost her parents at a very young young age. She never knew her parents. The game provides us with almost no information about them. We don't know anything about her parents or what happened to them. All we have is this single bloodstained hastily scrawled letter written by her mother that Ellie keeps in her backpack. It's a loving note from a parent who knows she will never meet her daughter, never see her grow up. There is one key line in this letter. From beyond the grave, her mother tells her, the thing you always have to remember is that life is worth living. Find your purpose and fight for it. I think this note by itself goes a long way to explaining why Ellie does what she does. The only words she has from her mother are telling her to fight. To make her mother proud, she must fight. But this note doesn't tell us the whole story. We certainly see Ellie fighting throughout the game, but what is her purpose? The note does not tell us what purpose she found that was worth fighting for. Next, I want to watch a short clip of the first interaction between Ellie and Riley in Left Behind. seen you and I don't even know how long 45 days well 46 technically want to know what I've been up to all this time I thought you were dead yeah here look no way still no roommate I had to sleep under Liz for three years, and you know how bad that girl smelled. You're a firefly. <laughs> you still have it up. What? What are you doing? I'm making sure I don't get caught with a firefly in my room. Relax. There are no soldiers on the entire floor. Here, congrats. Hey. Are we cool? 
Are we cool? I disappeared and you're mad. Yeah. And I owe you an explanation. Let's get out of here and I'll tell you all about it. So this clip reveals a lot about Ellie's background, which in turn reveals a lot about her motivations. Loss and abandonment are central to Ellie's character. She is getting abandoned all the time. First, she lost her parents before she ever even met them. Then her mother entrusted her to Marlene. But Marlene is the leader of a revolution. She doesn't have time for Ellie. So she dumps Ellie in an orphanage. That's the second time she's abandoned. In the orphanage, she meets Ryan. Riley. She has a friend, a romantic partner. But as we just saw in that clip, Riley abandoned her too, went off to go become a firefly. And so Ellie has been abandoned for a third time. Notice that line Riley says, still no roommate? After getting abandoned by Riley, Ellie is alone. She makes it clear later that she has no friends. Again, she is alone. Then, Riley reappears in her life, out of nowhere, and for a brief moment, Ellie isn't alone anymore. But then it turns out that Riley only reappeared to tell Ellie that she's going to leave again, this time for good. She's joining the Fireflies, and she's leaving the city. She just came back to make amends and say goodbye. Obviously, this is pretty upsetting. Ellie gets pissed off, then she accepts it, then she allows herself to be honest and vulnerable and asks Riley to stay, and Riley says yes, and it's very strange sweet, and everything is great for like five seconds, until literally everything goes wrong. After a frantic chase, Riley and Ellie are both bitten by zombies, and then this happens. What are we gonna do? The way I see it, we got two options. Option one, you take the easy way out. It's quick and painless. I'm not a fan of option one. Two? We fight. Fight for what? We're gonna turn into one of those things. There are a million ways we should have died before today. And a million ways we can die before tomorrow. But we fight for every second we get to spend with each other. Whether it's two minutes or two days, we don't give that up. I think Riley's monologue here, where she is dealing with the reality of their mortality and the fact that they both probably have very little time left, tells us a lot about Ellie's motivations. Riley says they should fight. Ellie asks her, fight for what? Which is of course the same question I'm asking in this essay. What is she fighting for? And Riley answers, we fight for every second we get to spend with each other, whether it's two minutes or two days. This dialogue plays over the scene of Ellie fighting to keep Joel alive later in her life, pretty explicitly explaining to the audience why she's doing what she's doing there. So I think this does go pretty far in explaining Ellie's motivations, why she's fighting as hard as she is. Again, loss and abandonment are central to Ellie's character. By the point in the story, where Joel is injured and Ellie is fighting to keep him alive, she has lost literally everyone over and over and over. And so, of course, she's going to fight for him for every second, for two minutes or two days. She learned that from Riley. But let's reverse back through the story some so we can understand this a bit better. So, Riley succumbs to the virus, and Ellie loses her. For those keeping score, that is the fourth abandonment Ellie has experienced. Death is also a kind of abandoning, one that no one can control and that can never be reversed. But Ellie lives. As it turns out, she's immune to the zombie infection, perhaps the first human ever anywhere to be immune. Off screen, she reunites with Marlene, but then because Marlene is injured and can't take Ellie herself, she dumps Ellie on Joel and Tess, and tasks them with delivering her to the Fireflies. This is another abandonment. Ellie has lost everything. Her only friend, the love of her life, 
her home. Marlene is the only thing resembling a family she has left, and Marlene dumps her off on some random strangers, who basically just happen to be in the right place at the right time. Watch this scene where Marlene pawns Ellie off on Joel. I want Joel to watch over her. Whoa, whoa, I don't whoa think shit, that's the I'm not Ellie. him. How do you know them? I was close with his brother Tommy. He said if I was ever in a jam, I could rely on him. The first time you watch this scene in game, it's kind of funny the way both Joel and Ellie are both simultaneously like, Whoa, no way, man. I don't want to hang out with them. But on a rewatch, knowing all that we know about what Ellie has been through, imagine the emotions she must be feeling here. She's lost everything. Everyone has abandoned her. And now Marlene is abandoning her too, to some random asshole she's never met before. Like, holy crap, can this girl catch a break? Break. Can someone just stick by her side? And the answer to that question is no. A big N-O. Because the plot of this game is miserable and relentless. Just as soon as Tess and Ellie start to get to know each other, boom, Tess is freaking dead. First bit by a zombie and then sacrificing herself so Joel and Ellie have time to get away from some pursuing soldiers. Fast forward and our characters meet Henry and Sam. Ellie is able to make a friend and spend time with someone around her own age for the first time since Riley's death. It's really Really sweet. Everyone is getting along, it feels like things are looking up. Then, blammo, they are both freaking dead. Sam gets infected by the zombie virus, and in despair, Henry shoots himself in the head. Holy shit. Ellie just keeps losing people. She must feel like she's cursed. And note, there's nothing she can do about any of these. These deaths are completely outside of her control. Remember that point, because it will become important later in the story. Fast forward again, Joel and Ellie reach Joel's brother, Tommy. Joel prepares to dump Ellie off on his brother and go his own way. She is being abandoned, again, for what must be like the tenth time in a row. Ellie sees this happening, sees Joel abandoning her, and she says, fuck this and fuck you. I'm not getting abandoned again. I abandon you first, asshole. And she does. She steals a horse and rides off into the woods. The first time I played this game, I remember finding her actually actions here a bit bratty and cliche. Like she's upset so she's gonna go run away, yada yada. But on a replay, her decision here feels much more earned. Of course, she would run away. This is a moment of pure frustration for her. An understandable response to a feeling of being completely unwanted. She must be saying to herself, do I seriously have to deal with this again? I have to go through getting abandoned again? I have to sit here and just accept being pawned off on some Someone else again? Like I'm just some problem that no one wants to deal with? Like goddamn, can this kid catch a break? No wonder she runs away. Joel follows her into the woods and the confrontation they have here is worth watching. Because in this scene, Ellie pretty clearly vocalizes her frustrations. Get up. We're leaving. And if I say no? Do you even realize what your life means? Huh? Running off like that, putting yourself at risk, it's pretty goddamn stupid. Well, I guess we're both disappointed with each other then. What do you want from me? Admit that you wanted to get rid of me the whole time. Tommy knows this area. Oh, fuck than... that. Well, I'm sorry. I trust him better than I trust myself. Stop with the bullshit. What are you so afraid of? That I'm going to end up like Sam? I can't get infected. I can take care of myself. How many close calls have we had? Well, we seem to be doing all right so far. And now you'll be doing even better with Tommy. Not her, you know. What? Maria told me about Sarah. Ellie? And... You are treading on some mighty thin ice here. I'm sorry about your daughter, Joel, but I have lost people too. You have no idea what loss is. Everyone I have cared for has either died or left me. Everyone fucking except for you. So don't tell me that I would be safer with someone else because the truth is I would just be more scared. You're right. You're not my daughter. And I sure as hell ain't your dad. And we 
we are going our separate ways. There is so much bullshit happening in this scene, it's hard to focus on any single comment. First, notice what Ellie's focus is here. Admit that you wanted to get rid of me the whole time. This is Ellie expressing her feelings of being unwanted, frustration at getting abandoned over and over. Ellie is someone who had never abandoned Joel or anyone else. Look back at this scene in Pittsburgh where Henry and Sam run away, leaving Joel alone to fend for himself. Hurry, hurry! Okay, we gotta get him up. Uh, I'm sorry. We're leaving. What? What's this bullshit? Hey, now! What the fuck, Henry? We stick together. Ellie could have abandoned Joel there too. She was safe, she could have run away with Henry and Sam. Instead, she throws herself back into the fire, saying, we stick together. Ellie has experienced abandonment too often to subject someone else to it. And how does Joel repay her for this loyalty? By bugging off as soon as he gets the chance. Ellie is confronting him with this, with the simple fact that he, like everyone else in her life, is choosing to abandon her. Instead of facing this, Joel makes a bunch of excuses. Tommy knows the area better. You'd be safer with him. And Ellie says, stop with the bullshit. Meaning just be honest with me. Joel is doing all this performative dissembling and equivocating and making excuses. Because he just can't be honest about the reason he doesn't want her around. And Ellie has already figured it out. She is a perceptive character. Joel doesn't want anyone close to him because he doesn't want to be hurt again the way he was hurt when he lost his daughter. Joel's response, you don't know what loss is, is shocking. After all we've seen, like loss is all Ellie knows. This is such an unfair and condescending and ignorant comment from Joel. It's infuriating. Notice the long pause she takes before she responds. Like she can't believe what she's hearing. Ellie also expresses a new motivation here that hadn't popped up before. She says, don't tell me I would be safer with someone else. Because the truth is I would just be more scared. For the first and only time, Ellie expresses a desire to just feel safe to not feel afraid anymore. But of course she does. We've seen this world they're living in. It is dangerous, it is terrifying. Everything is trying to kill her. There is a new horror around every corner. As much of an asshole as Joel is, he is a survivor. He just doesn't die. Like, I wouldn't want to take Joel with me on a trip to the water park, because he would be a huge prickly bummer in that setting. But if you're going on a journey through hell, there's no one better to have at your side than him. And Ellie is living in hell. The only reason she survived it is because of Joel. For her, he is safety. So if she can, she will stick with him. And of course he chooses to be a jerk about it, because at this point in the game, that's who he is. It all works out because then this happens. Ellie, get off your horse. Give it on back to Tommy. I'm gonna hang on to this fella. That's all right with you. Oh, don't make me repeat myself. What are you doing? Your wife kind of scares me. I don't want her coming after me. Sorry for stealing your horse. Well, come back to town. Let's discuss it at least. You know me, my mind's all made up. University, Eastern Colorado. How do I find this lab? It's in the science building. Looks like a giant mirror. You can't miss it. care of that wife of yours. There's a place for you here, you know? You good? I'm good. Adios, little brother. For the second time in Ellie's life after someone has abandoned her, they've turned around and come back. It happened first with Riley, who was going to leave her to join the Fireflies, and then chose to stay instead. Now it's Joel, he was going to leave, and then he chooses to stay with her. This is what Ellie wants for someone to choose her, to stay, to live. 
And just like how she immediately lost Riley after that decision, she almost immediately loses Joel too. At the university, Joel is very gravely injured. come full circle. We've already talked about how hard Ellie fights to keep Joel alive and why she does it, but I do want to add one more thing here. Every other person she's lost, her mother, Riley, Tess, Henry, and Sam, in those situations, Ellie had absolutely no control. She couldn't do anything for any of those people. Her mother was dead before she ever knew her. After Riley was infected, there was no way to save her. Same with Tess and Sam. This time, for the first First time ever. When Joel is injured, there is a chance, the slimmest of chances, to save him. And that's why she fights so hard here, because she can finally be in control. She can finally save someone she cares about. But we're still not done. Abandonment and loss go a really long way to explain why Ellie fights as hard as she does. She does fight so she won't be alone anymore, but that doesn't explain why she goes all the way to Salt Lake City. Watch this scene where Joel gives her the choice to stop pushing forward, to stop fighting, to go somewhere where she can be both safe and not alone anymore. We don't have to do this. You know that, right? What's the other option? Go back to Tommy's. Be done with this whole damn thing. After all we've been through. Everything that I've done. It can't be for nothing. Joel says to her, hey, we can go back to Tommy's. We can be together there. You can be safe there. We don't have to go to the Fireflies to get those things. And Ellie says no. If the only thing that motivated Ellie was a desire to not be alone anymore, to stop getting abandoned, she should have taken this choice. She should have gone back to Tommy's. She says no because there's something else she wants. Though she doesn't say what that is until the very last scene of the game. So Ellie almost drowns, then gets rescued by the fireflies, but before ever regaining consciousness, they put her under anesthesia and prepare to cut open her brain to use her immunity to craft a vaccine for the zombie virus, thus saving humanity. From this point on, Ellie is a character without agency. She doesn't get to choose whether to sacrifice herself to craft that vaccine. She doesn't get to choose to say yes or no. Both the fireflies and Joel make the choice for her. The fireflies say yes and Joel says no. No. And because Joel is better at shooting people than the Fireflies are, he gets his way. This lack of agency is part of what makes her an opaque character, what makes her motivation sort of mysterious. We just don't know for certain what she would have chosen. It's left open-ended. Marlene says that she would have chosen to sacrifice herself. Joel doesn't dispute it, but that doesn't make it certain. Ellie doesn't regain consciousness until Joel is already driving her far away from the Fireflies. And watch how this interaction plays out. Uh, what the hell am I wearing? Just take it easy. Drugs are still wearing off. What happened? We found the fireflies. Don't 
Turns out there's a whole lot more like you, Ellie. People that are immune. There's dozens, actually. Ain't time a damn bit of good, neither. They've actually... They've stopped looking for a cure. I'm taking us home. Sorry. Joel lies and says that Ellie's immunity didn't matter. She's not special, there's dozens of her. The Fireflies don't need her. She's free to live her life like a normal girl because that's all she is, a normal girl. In response, Ellie doesn't say anything. She just rolls over, faces away from Joel. This gives us a hint into that final mysterious motivation that drove her all the way to Salt Lake City, but we're not quite there yet. To finish this off, to fully understand Ellie's motivations, why she fought so hard, Hard, let's watch the final scene in the game. All right, come on. Hey, wait. <sighs> Back in Boston? Back when I was bitten? I wasn't alone. My best friend was there. And she got bit too. We didn't know what to do. So, she says, let's just wait it out. You know, we can be all poetic and just lose our minds together. I'm still waiting for my turn. Ellie. Her name was Riley, and she was the first to die. And then it was Tess. And then Sam. None of that is on you. Oh, you don't understand. I struggled for a long time with surviving. And you, no matter what, you keep finding something to fight for. Now, I know that's not what you want to hear right now. Swear to me. Swear to me that everything that you've said about the Fireflies is true. I swear. I think you can interpret Ellie's words here in a couple different ways. You could interpret this as her saying she wanted to die with Riley all the way back at the start. Joel killed all those fireflies in a desperate and violent attempt to save her life, which is bitterly ironic, since she didn't even really want to be alive in the first place. I think that's a valid interpretation. But there's something else here too. She's listing off all the people she's lost on this journey. Riley, Tess, Henry and Sam, for their sacrifices to matter, for their deaths to have meaning. Ellie's journey needs to end in some kind of success. She needs to accomplish something. Like, if this journey had ended with Ellie's immunity leading to the crafting of a vaccine which really did save humanity, then Riley's death, which led to Ellie discovering her immunity in the first place, or Tessa's sacrifice, which allowed them to escape the soldiers, or Henry and Sam, who helped them get out of pits alive. All these sacrifices would have mattered, would have led to something that mattered. It would make those deaths less tragic, less pointless. If her journey leads to nothing, if her immunity doesn't matter, then their deaths didn't matter either. They were just random and pointless. The really tragic thing is that by lying about all this, Joel is making those deaths pointless. They could have mattered if he didn't do what he did. Now, Ellie is a very perceptive character. Remember back when she knew that Joel was about to abandon her, even without his saying so, and leaves him before he can leave her. Or remember when she calls him out on his bullshit during their confrontation afterward. Ellie can tell when Joel isn't being honest. She can tell that there's something wrong with his story about the fireflies. She is saying to him here, if my immunity doesn't matter, then neither did Riley's death, neither did Tess's death, 
neither did Henry's or Sam's. So be really freaking sure about this. Be honest with me about this. This is her motivation. This is what Ellie was fighting for. Why she fought so hard. This is why she didn't choose a safe life back at Tommy's, but to keep pushing forward. She was fighting for Riley, fighting for Tess, fighting for Henry and Sam. Fighting so that their sacrifices meant something. Joel's big lie here is not just a lie. Not just deceiving someone he cares about. Not just a personal betrayal, but also a devaluing of all those sacrifices, making their deaths pointless, undoing all the hardship and toil that Ellie went through, undoing all she fought for. 